guys and welcome to Hatta Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about gallstones, which is also known as cholelithiasis. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of what the disease is all about, let's take a closer look at the word cholelithiasis. So the word cholelithiasis is Greek derived, so it has Greek roots and chola means bile and lithos means stone. So if we put that together, we get bile stones or stones of the gallbladder. So that is why gallstones is also referred to as cholelithiasis. So what are gallstones? Gallstones are the hardened deposits, which are the stones of digestive fluid that can form within your gallbladder. So if we take a closer look at this video that's playing on the right side of my screen, we see the gallbladder, which stores the bile. And because the bile is stored in here, for long periods of time, these little hardened deposits develop from the bile fluid. And this is actually what the gallstones are. They are these hardened deposits of digestive fluid that are found within the gallbladder. So now let's talk about the types of gallstones. So there are two main types of gallstones. The first one are the cholesterol stones and the second one are the pigment stones. So the cholesterol stones actually make up the majority of all gallstones, about 80% of them and they form when there's too much cholesterol in the bile. The pigment stones, however, form when there's excess bilirubin in the bile. And if you take a closer look at this little bubble on my right side of the screen, it says, according to Harvard Health Publications, 80% of gallstones are made up of cholesterol. The other 20% are made up of calcium salts and bilirubin. So the majority of gallstones look like this. They are cholesterol calculi or stones. Another word for stones is calculi. So they're usually these white, yellowish, hardened deposits. And these are what the pigment calculi look like, or the pigment stones. They are made up of bilirubin and other calcium salts. So they are usually stained dark. So moving on, let's talk about some signs and symptoms of gallstones. So the first symptom is usually pain in the upper right abdomen. And this is usually the area that's affected because that is where the gallbladder sits in the body, just beneath the liver. The patient may also experience nausea and vomiting, dark urine and clay-colored stools, stomach pain, burping, diarrhea, and indigestion. So how can one go about diagnosing a gallstone disease? So the blood test may be used to look for signs of infection, obstruction, pancreatitis, or jaundice. So because these stones actually go on to obstruct various ducts, so let's go back to the original video. So because these gallstones actually get stuck within these multiple ducts, it will go on to cause a stasis of bile within the gallbladder and eventually the gallbladder will become increased in pressure and due to the stasis of bile will start to expand and inflame and become infected. So this is what the cholecystitis or the infection of the gallbladder is. So a blood test will show us the sign of infection. This gallstone can also go on to block the pancreatic duct, which is down here, and this can cause the onset of pancreatitis for the patient. So there will also be an increase in bilirubin because if we have a stasis of bile, we're going to have increased values of bilirubin in the blood. So these are all markers in the blood that may indicate a gallstone disease. So the ultrasound can also be used, and this is the best test to examine the gallbladder for stones. And here we look for gallbladder inflammation, the size of the bile ducts, and the presence of stones with the patient's symptoms. So if you take a closer look at this image on the bottom right of my screen, we see the ultrasound of two gallstones within the gallbladder. And it says the stones are dependently located and show posterior acoustic shadowing, allowing them to be differentiated from gallbladder polyps. So this is actually the shadowing that they're talking about. So usually when we have a hardened deposit there, such as a stone, it'll cause us shadowing. So that gives us an idea of what's happening within the gallbladder. Continuing with diagnosis techniques, we can also use a CT scan, and this will show the gallbladder and the biliary ducts and can detect gallstones, blockages, and other complications. We may also do endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, which is called ERCP. And in this process, a device injects a temporary dye into the biliary ducts and the dye makes it easier to see any stones in the ducts when x-rays are taken. And sometimes a stone can actually be removed during this procedure. So if we take a closer look at this image in the middle of my screen, we see what the ERCP process looks like. 
So the endoscope is inserted through the mouth into the duodenum, which is down here, and we are able to access the biliary ducts. And once we enter the biliary ducts, we can inject the dye. And if there are any blockages where the dye does not pick up on the x-rays, we know that it is most probably attributed to the presence of a stone. And if you look at this image on my left, this is actually a CT scan. Uh, which demonstrate the appearance of numerous rounded high-density ball-like structures within the gallbladder. And we see it right here. And this is actually multiple gallstones within the gallbladder of a patient. So how can one go about treating gallstones? So treatment is only considered in patients who have stones in the gallbladder, causing a gallbladder inflammation, blockage of the bile ducts, or if their stones have moved from their bile ducts into their intestines. And treatment options can include a cholecystectomy, which is the surgical removal of the gallbladder. So if these patients do have gallstones, but they're tiny little stones that are found within the gallbladder and the patient is asymptomatic, we don't really need to treat the patient because we don't want to interfere with something that is not causing any harm. Only if we have the onset of a cholecystitis or some sort of pain and discomfort in the patient, then we will look at treatment options. So the first treatment option is a cholecystectomy, and this is the surgical removal of the gallbladder. So as you can see in this image on my right, we operate and we dissect the gallbladder completely. So the bile will drain directly into the duodenum. So this is what a dissected gallbladder looks like. And as you can see here, it's full of gallstones. We can also try treatment with ursodeoxycholic acid. And this is helpful in patients who have cholesterol stones because it can sometimes be slowly dissolved with ursodeoxycholic acid. This type of treatment, which is known as dissolution, may take up to 24 months to be effective. So over time, this medication can act on those cholesterol stones and actually dissolve them bit by bit each day. So as we mentioned in the diagnostic procedures, we can actually treat the patient with ERCP as well. So here the flexible fiber optic tube goes into the mouth through the digestive system and into the gallbladder. And if you take a closer look at this image on my left, we see all these stones within the gallbladder. And we see a stone here in the common bile duct. And this is actually called the ampulla of vata, where the bile duct actually meets the duodenum to drain the bile. And we see here how the stone here is easily removed by the ERC process. So a wire guided sphincterotome is inserted through, a balloon is inflated and it pulls downward. So it actually removes that gallstone into the duodenum so it can be passed out through the feces. And the last treatment technique is called a lithotripsy. And this is when ultrasonic shock waves are aimed at the gallstones, which can break them up. And if the gallstones become small enough, then they can pass safely into the stools. So we see here just how kidney stones are blasted. Our gallstones can also be blasted in a similar way. And we see that the ultrasonic shock waves are aimed here at the gallstone and it breaks it up into little tiny bits. So you can safely pass out through the ducts and eventually reach the intestines where they can be excreted or removed from the body. And that brings us to the end of this video on the gallstones. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we make a new upload. And if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.